everybody, this is Perch. If you listen to this channel, you know I like action comics. I like what's going on there. I think it's a good saga. I, I People have asked, uh, there's people who like that series or enjoying it, people who are not enjoying it. People who are not often ask me, like, what, why Why do you like it? Is it because you're trying to be friends with Philip Kennedy Johnson? Is that why? It's like, uh, no, he seems like a nice guy. I'm sure I will see him at a convention. I'm sure that's it. We're not going to go on long walks on the beach together. I, it's, it's uh, that's, none of that. There's no bromance or anything. I just, I enjoy it. I enjoy, what I enjoy about it is pretty simple. It feels like somebody is attempting to do an epic. It feels like somebody's attempting to do a, you know, multi-year big swing story where major things happen and there's a big, long adventure that, you know, it, it, it features kind of the core of the character elements. I mean, if you're looking at the writing of that, um, still, I remember when Philip Kennedy Johnson first came on Superman, the commentary a lot of people had said was, this guy gets it. Because the dialogue that he had Superman saying was was that it was classic Superman. It felt like Superman. And you read the most recent issue, and it, it still feels that way. The dialogue of Superman is trying to be inspirational against all odds. He, he won't leave people behind. It's, it's Superman. But I like the epic feel to it. I like the idea that you can go, you know, that you could do something in 24 issues or more. This this giant, sprawling, you know, story. I, I think that not enough comics do that. And I, I, you know, everything is more short form. We'll do it in six issues. We'll have a little, you know, let's do a little event. I was, um, there's some of the crossovers that happen. It's like, hey, I, an event, you know, something like, like Shadow War. It's like something happened. And uh, somebody's trying to frame somebody else, and the heroes all fight. And six issues later, it's revealed to be a twist, and it's it's fine. And I like those stories too. But I like people trying to to go for go for the moon, do something huge. And so that that's what I like about that uh, that series. But uh, a viewer viewer mail comes in. It says, "Good afternoon, Perch. I'm writing this because I can't take it anymore. What has happened to the Superman mythos?" has finally pushed me over the edge. From Superboy uh, being aged up to Superman, and Lois not reacting to Superboy's physical abuse by Ultraman, to Clark revealing his Superman identity to the world. Right after Clark made that reveal, everyone within his orbit would be in grave danger, from friends and family to everyone at the Daily Planet. I don't get it, Perch. I also don't understand why Superman didn't go after Ultraman. Those actions taken by Bendis at DC and DC Editorial were the final straw for me. I haven't picked up a new book since. Oh, you're missing a good series. You should pick up action. It is, uh, it's not like Silver Age Superman, but there's, a, there's an aspect to it that feels more classic, certainly, because Superman is behaving like himself, and he's, you know, decidedly, you know, taking a stand. But what, what you're writing there, what's in your, your mail really is a commentary on Bendis's run of Superman. And I, I, I think in hindsight, now that, you know, that run is completed and we've seen, you know, it from start to finish, we, we, you can look at it and you can kind of, you could, you, you can start to ask some questions like what was, what was Bendis trying to accomplish here? You know, you're, you're changing up the Superman mythology. You're, you're, you're doing all that, but why, what was the purpose? Certainly, aging up John Kit was key. The idea that uh, you wanted to have this, uh, you know, teenager to kind of deal with that, you know, in your Legion of Superheroes book. Uh, it, but looking at all these parts, and especially if you do bring in Legion of Superheroes, it it feels the the entire run feels decidedly disjointed. And that whether you like Bendis or you hate Bendis, that that is kind of unusual for the way he approaches titles. There's usually some level of, of point to them. If you're, you know, working backwards, we had the, uh, you know, the Iron Man bit where you had Riri come in. You also had, uh, you know, Doom as an Iron Man for a period of time during the other book. If you look at the X Men when he was on it, I mean, the intent was to, you know, bring the X Men into the future. I, one of his his key things that he seems to like to do is like get get kids and put them you know, get them older, put them in, in situations beyond them. And then, Hey, hilarious. And, and I don't know if this is kind of his way of saying, this is how I reach a younger audience or a new audience, you know, whatever it happens to be, but we've seen this play out a few times before. 
But even with the X-Men, which had kind of a, uh, not sprawling, but it was it was kind of a convoluted method of you, you bring them into the future and then they're hanging out, you know, in, in the school with uh, Wolverine, those guys for a while. And then they're going to go out and hang out with Cyclops and Cyclops is a, you know, revolutionary at the time because of uh, everything that happened with AVX. And you go further back to the Avengers and the point was, hey, new team, we're going to break break the old team apart. We're going to bring a new team in. It's going to have a new dynamic. Then we're going to split the new team into two. Uh, through the you know what happened with Civil War and then Secret Invasion, and then we're going to uh, let the villains be in charge for a while and deal with that. There is like a flow with Superman. Um, he comes on to it. He introduces new villain. We get the stuff with the dad. We take the kid away. Um, I, I've said this before in other videos, and I, I don't want to belabor the point because people do go on and on and on about John Kidd being aged up, and I agree it was a bad move, but at some point. It's uh, it gets it gets tiresome to talk about it for the five hundredth time. I mean, what what's more to be said than it was a bad move? Uh, at the end of the day, it was it was very subtractive. There were a lot of stories that could be told in the dynamic between father and son, and by aging him up, you you took that largely away. Many of the scenes after he was aged up was, hey, John's going off to hang out with Legion of Superheroes, which is time travel. So I mean, in theory, you know, he could be gone from home with dad Lois not at all I mean he, there's no time that need to be missed the entire Ultraman um, business it, it, it is weird but it fits because you know the the part of Superman that was it fits what business was doing I guess I should say because a part of what business was doing was taking the family dynamic in this case Lois and John and Clark and kind of snapping that apart you know, the, the family aspect of the title, which is what was, you know, what, what was preceding it, um, was broken up because it's like, okay, we're going to leave Superman alone. We're going to send Lois into space. Now we're going to bring her back, but then she's going to come back secretly and she's going to not tell Clark she needs to do something for her job. Like it didn't, none of it made sense. The comic book was about driving everyone away from each other including when John comes back and then he's older now. And so you, you, you know, you get to miss that parenting both for mom and dad. And then you, you know, the reveal of the secret identity and, and kind of all these elements was all about splitting this group apart. And I, I I'd say yeah, the best way to describe it is reductive. Now, since the majority of Superman's comic career had him apart, I mean, he's he, he certainly he's married Lois, and he's been, uh, you know, all these things are certainly have happened, uh, you know, in the time span of Superman being Superman in the comic, he's been single and without a child for most of it. Yeah, he was married for a long time, married uh, to, to Lois, but, but still, if you look at the grand scheme of things, so maybe Bendis' point was to take Superman, you know, kind of remove these elements in the same way that you know, over at Marvel, they wanted to remove the uh, the marriage. And I guess my belief is that's probably why it's disliked uh, by a lot of fans as much as it is, why that run is disliked, why John Kent and all that, is because comic fans are tired of having characters evolve or grow to a point where they get married, maybe they have children, because there's this whole, you know, this whole progression of their lives. And then comic editors, comic writers come in and go, Hey, let's just reset that back to where it was. As a as a buyer, as a and I'm using the word buyer here more than than reader or customer, but as somebody who's paying money for this stuff, you do kind of feel like, hey, I just spent a lot of money, you know, growing the character to this point, and then only to have it like, yeah, let's just turn the clock back. That that gets annoying, pretty pretty annoying. And also, I think you know part of the journey of reading comics is to enjoy this progression of a character. But, you know, maybe the problem here, too, is a, a lot of writers, a lot of editors view kind of the uh, this stuff as a one-way trip. You you know, you, you grow up, you are single for a while, you get married, you have kids, you die. And maybe the some in some weird, twisted way, the, uh, the writers are going, well, you know, we can't kill him. I mean, we can. We've done it several times, but... You know, we, we, if the next step is death, we better wind the clock back. So let's get rid of that pesky kid in marriage and get them back to single and go through all that. I, I don't know. I, I can't tell you. I understand your frustration. I guess my only comment to it was go check out Action Comics. It's a pretty damn good book. Yes, it's Superman by himself. 
but it's really good. I think uh, I think you might enjoy it. Anyway, uh, I, do you have a theory on all this? I, I, again, with Bendis' run in the hindsight, maybe it's time to do some retrospectives on that entire series. But I think it's it's most marked by uh, what a waste. In a lot of ways, it was. You have a big name writer come on the Legion of Superheroes, and that title went went nowhere. I mean, it, it just there there was no point to it. Um, you had uh, you had this this again a big name writer come on Superman control both titles, and they threw some pretty big name art. I mean Ivan Rice is on there, John Romita Jr. You had some some pretty big swing people, and it's it felt like the like well we let's let's focus on trying to put over this Leviathan group that nobody has really picked up on, and uh, let's uh, you know let's uh, I mean what was accomplished? I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of disappointing when you think about it. Uh, what was accomplished, apparently, is driving away this van. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course, and thanks for listening.